This is a recording showing how to complete a sheet metal task in Fusion 360. And the task that we're going to work on today is this one here, producing something like uh, this object, a toggle clamp in the top right hand corner. Um, if you want to take a screenshot of this image, that might help so that uh, you can follow it throughout the rest of the task. So do that now. OK. Um, we're going to be operating in sheet metal, so what I do straight away is go to the sheet metal option here in the ribbon bar at the top, and then within the sheet metal options, um, I'm going to start sketching first. And what I think I'm going to do, um, there's a there's a symmetry line. Uh, I'll just bring this back in so I can uh, show it the, the, along the middle of the object here there's a line of symmetry and I wonder if that's going to help me um, and then otherwise um, this is kind of a rectangle with some bits cut out of it this is another rectangle stuck on the end so I'm going to treat it a bit like that and see how I get on and I'm going to only draw half of this and then um, draw the other half later okay so I'll make the origin at the back center we need to go uh, up a bit and left a bit. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't be doing that with a rectangle at all. Control Z to undo, and I'll do it with the lines instead. So up a bit, uh, left a bit, down a bit, down a bit out a bit and down a bit. You'll notice I kept on saying a bit. I wasn't really uh, using specific dimensions there, just trying to get it approximately right. So let's put in some specific dimensions and see how we go. Uh, that line there needs to be 65 divided by 2 and I can put it in as 65 over 2 like that. Um, let's just bring all of this down like so. So now everything fits a bit better. Uh, next dimension I'll put in, I accidentally put in a dimension there that I don't really care about. Next dimension I'm going to put in is that from here to here. Should be 80. I'm using the D key to ask for dimensions. Uh, from here to here should be uh, 25 and that's not too bad actually that's kind of uh, what I want. Uh, next I'm going to put in some fillets uh, from there to there and that is a fillet of all the fillets are five millimeters. Another fillet from there to there is also five and a third fillet from there to there is five. Um, and I guess it might be helpful, I can probably at this stage just also put in the second bit of the feature uh, which is the, the hole in the middle, which looks something like this and then I can use um, a center point arc. Uh, so first of all I want the center point, uh, let's just get this right, center point arc uh, there, there, and there. That looks okay. Uh, I can put some dimensions on that. Uh, Again, using the D key to ask for dimensions. This dimension here is, uh, it says 15 on the diagram. I uh, Sorry, 15.8 on the diagram. I think that's 15.8 to the edge of the flange. I'm going to make it 15. Uh, and I think that'll actually give me the right numbers. Uh, this dimension here is 15. And uh, I 
want to constrain that point to be uh, located directly under the center so that this is exactly a quarter of a circle. Um, so that all seems fine. Uh, that's ready to go and finally I can trim off that line there. Uh, somehow I've lost a constraint there. Let's just see what disappeared. Not sure. Ah, the constraint that fixed that point. Okay, well, um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. This is basically the shape I want, I think. I'm going to try finishing that sketch now. There's always this conflict in um, fusion modeling. How much do you do in one sketch versus how much do you do multiple sketches? I tend to lean towards doing lots and lots of small sketches rather than one big sketch. Uh, here I've kind of done one big sketch, so I've gone against my own rule, but that's fine. Uh, okay, next uh, we will turn this. Uh, this is a really important point. For sheet metal we use the flange tool um, and you want to start by using the flange tool. So it's tempting to say, well this is the first piece so I'm going to extrude it. Uh, don't do that. Uh, make it a flange and say OK. And now you'll find we can go to modify sheet metal rules uh, and we get the, the rules for this design and that's where we can change the thickness of the part and make it 0.8 millimeters which is given on the sheet. Okay, uh, that looks good. Next up I'm going to put in the other flanges uh, so there's one there uh, which goes straight up and I think it's 50. Um, it's obviously got some curvature that we're going to worry about later but I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, so that's okay. And then there are flanges off this face here or this uh, edge here. First of all up um, a height of about 15 and then out I keep getting these error messages, but it doesn't... Uh, it's just because initially when you've got zero height in the flange, it, it doesn't work properly. Um, so I think it's all fine. I'm going to ignore those. Um, the width of this, it says 7.8. Um, okay, well, I'm going to put that in as 7.8. We, we might just come back at the end and check some of these dimensions because dimensions on flanges involve the bend curvature and they're not always easy to see whether you're putting in the right numbers. And then finally, there's another flange here. Uh, let's just move that out of the way so I can see this. And that is 25 high. Uh, good. This is now getting towards what I wanted. Um, a few more things that I'm going to do before I mirror this. The first is just to sketch on this face and get this looking like I want it to. Uh, so I need uh, an arc. Um, what's the best way? Let's do it this way, I think. Let's make a construction line down the center. Is that the midpoint? I'm going to assume that's the midpoint and just see what happens. Um, and I'll make that line there a construction. Construction line. Um, I'm just going to check if that is the midpoint. Uh, if we inspect uh, measure from there to there, that is 12.1 millimeters and from there to there is also 12.1 millimeters. So uh, I had the midpoint correct. Now we want our circle. Uh, the center should be somewhere on that line and it should be a tangent to the top here. Uh, I'm still in construction mode, so I just want to remove construction mode. 
and now what I need to do is make that circle the correct diameter um, possibly the easiest thing to do here is um, uh, can I use the tangent constraint like that yes I can and also like that excellent so I use the tangent constraint just to give myself that um, circular cutoff at the, the top of the uh, flange there and what I can do now is to trim away the bottom half of the circle which we don't need good and next I put in the second part of the circle I want which is diameter 10 and I think I can finish that sketch that now looks like I want it to and now I'm going to use the extrude tool because I'm really just cutting away uh, through the part pull it that way so it's a cut and I'm gonna say to that face there good so that now looks like I wanted it to um, the last thing that I'm gonna do before I start on sorry I managed to put this in an odd place on the screen uh, before I start I'm just gonna make the holes uh, which are on this face I'm going to include that fillet and that fillet because I need their centers to line up my holes with uh, and now I should be able to say okay uh, make a hole of diameter 3.6 and another one here of diameter 3.6 and I can extrude one, two of those, uh, make it a cut and I'm gonna go again extrude only as far as that face there There are different ways you could do all of this, um, but that's, I think, a pretty reasonable way to have made a start. Uh, now what I'm going to do is to uh, create a mirror of all of that body. And the mirror plane, I deliberately drew it so it was symmetric about uh, that plane there, which I guess is the XY plane in this configuration. Um, so when I mirror it, I'm starting to get to something that's pretty much exactly what we want um, and what I'll do as well is just to combine those two bodies so I've only got one body uh, perhaps I have to do do that uh, in so I have to go back into the solid modeling options to do that I'll say okay and now I've only got one body and the last thing to do is just to um, get the right um, extrusions on this face here and I think I'll be done after that so I'm going to create a sketch uh, again I'm going to do a center same kind of thing I did last time a center diameter circle and then put in tangent constraints so that it's tangent to there tangent to there and I guess I have to say that should lie on the center line which it's not picking up uh, so instead I'll put in a center line uh, and now I think if I uh, so I forced the center to sit on that line and that looks fine I'm happy with that uh, and I can trim away that section and that section and then one final center diameter circle uh, remembering to turn off construction mode and that circle there has diameter 14 I think I can finish that sketch and again I can just extrude to 
for the back face and say OK. And I'm fairly happy with that if I just put it into a configuration that's similar. Uh, the only thing I don't like is this bit here looks a bit too wide to me. So I'm just going to go right back to sketch number one um, and put in a dimension from there to there and that dimension should be 10.8. Uh, it's quite hard to find where that's coming from. It's towards the bottom right of the initial sheet we looked at. Now if I go back and finish the sketch that looks a bit more like it does in the uh, in the actual model. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that and uh, I think that is the part completed. Uh, one more thing to say, I didn't check all the dimensions. Uh, there are things like um, if we just measure from that face to that line um, that is saying it's come out at 14.2 millimeters uh, which isn't quite right the 0.8 has gone the wrong way um, so we just need to go through if we were doing this um, for precise measurement as well uh, which isn't the case in the test that this is for we would need to go through and check all of those numbers and maybe adjust some lengths and some dimensions uh, like I say getting the dimensions right on flanges and similar can be quite tricky um, and it depends which flange rules you choose um, but the easiest thing to do is to go and do something and then correct it uh, when you get to the end of it. Uh, so that's that done.